everyone. A very good afternoon to everyone who's joined the session. I have a whole bunch of signups coming in in the last 15 minutes or so. Thanks so much for joining the session. I am Shivani Roy. I uh, run the webinar series at Lead Squared. A lot of you may have heard me in other sessions as well. So I'm your regular webinar host. Uh, thanks so much for joining the session. As I said, Today we'll be discussing how to close more deals with effective sales management. Um, so we'll be discussing CRMs, we'll be discussing sales management, we'll be discussing call centers and much more. So thanks so much. I'd also give a special mention to all of Suhas's friends who've joined. He told me that a lot of his friends have joined. So special welcome to you guys. Uh, thanks so much for coming. Uh, now, coming back to the webinar, before we start, actually, uh, those of you who have questions, and I know quite a few, there will be quite a few questions, please do keep them uh, ready in the question panel, and we will take them up once the presentations are over. So stay tuned for that. That will happen once the presentations are over. So to take us through this today, we have two speakers. We have Gaurav Singh from Ameo and we have Su Suhas Shinoy from Lead Squared. I'd like both the speakers to please share a few lines about themselves before they start presenting. Uh, now over to our first speaker, Gaurav. Uh, hi Gaurav, thanks so much for joining us. If you could please share a few lines about yourself and take the session forward. Hello, uh, thank you Shibani. Thank you for the introduction. Hi guys, uh, I'm Gaurav Singh and uh, I'm a product marketing manager with a company called Ameo. So I would like to give a background about the company first. So Ameo is a omni-channel contact center provider and it also has uh, other different products that solve use cases of customer service, customer support, telesales and sales. So I bring with me an experience in uh, SaaS sales, inside sales, uh, marketing, product marketing and uh, bits and pieces of the product. Uh, product. So uh, I would like to uh, touch upon the flow of the webinar here first, so that I know that you guys have joined in from different industries and because uh, the inside sales or the telesales processes that we'll be discussing in this webinar, the flavors are different for different kind of industries, uh, healthcare, travel, education, financial. So here and there, there'll be uh, differences in the process based on the business requirements, but overall the basics remain the same. So I'll be starting with the what the inside sales process looks like and how a basic process looks like. And then we will de dwell down into what challenges each part of the process brings with it and how can a tight uh, sync between the CRM and a good call center software bring about more productivity, more business results uh, to the management and as well as to the agents who are working uh, day in, day out, making calls, uh, attending their quota. And then finally, uh, Suhas uh, from Lee Squared uh, will be taking up. He'll be discussing industry use cases uh, so that you can connect better. And uh, uh, we will whatever we are trying to do is uh, we're trying to get it more value driven and uh, more insightful. So that's how the flow would be like. All right, guys. So we'll be starting now. Oh, uh, sorry, Suhas. Suhas, can you also introduce yourself? Uh, and we'll start. Hello, so this is Suhas, and I work as a director of customer success in Lead Squared. So that's all for now. Uh, I think I'll join you back when the session starts. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Suhas. All right, guys, so we'll start now. So, uh, okay, so to the, to coming to the topic for how to close more deals uh, with effective sales management. So I'll just I want to touch, up, touch base upon the background of insight sales and how insight sales has evolved as an industry. So I would say that a lot of your users, a lot of the agents or the account executives who are closing deals over phone or maybe who are selling their products or services over phone, how has the industry evolved? So I'll start off with the US market and how, uh, how US has seen a revolution in terms of insight sales, uh, calling, uh, reaching out to prospects over phone and uh, not only over phone, but even also using different touch points and having that ability to close the deals or sell stuff uh, remotely and not actually meeting the person in the ground, right? And uh, from the US market, the things have picked up slowly. And I think today we have a vibrant industry in terms of uh, remote sales or an inside sales industry, which is uh, building up 
in the country itself in India. And there's a lot of boom of startups. There are a lot of B2C activity happening uh, today. And a lot of uh, industries and a lot of uh, customers are willing to uh, buy from you over calls. So, okay. So this is a little bit about the industry. So coming back uh, to our first slide, as I discussed, so this is a basic inside sales process and how does a basic inside process look looks like? So as I said, as there are different flavors or different industries per se, but the basics will remain the same. So there are three, four, so there are four key components in terms of how uh, you work upon the leads, how you get the leads, then how you engage with your prospects or your customers. So uh, this is a basic insight sales process of how it looks like. So there are four key elements into it. And I, I'm, I'm sure that you guys would be able to relate more. One would be a lead generation, then coming once the leads are generated, then coming to the area of how they are distributed uh, to your audience, uh, to your agents. So they can be segmentation or they can be uh, based on geographies, based on skill sets. And then when the, when the leads are there on your dashboard, then you try to engage with those leads, uh, try to be more productive with those leads, try to close as many deals as you can, uh, try to do quality conversation, depends on what your prospects would be like. And finally, then we come to the conversion part, uh, where you, how much quota you have attained, how much, uh, maybe you know how much selling you have done and from a management or, or a supervisor perspective how is he able to monitor the quality of conversation how is he able to monitor the number of connects that you have made the coverage that you have achieved so uh, giving it a little flavor in terms of the industries so i would say uh, this process will work both from an inbound perspective and also from an outbound perspective so giving you a perspective on inbound uh, Every one of you would have digital assets uh, like websites or apps where you get your leads from. Uh, so industries are different. So for example, in travel industries, maybe websites drive a lot of inbound leads for you, right? And then you work up on those leads. Uh, these leads are divided by you uh, based on your geographies or based on your skill sets. For example, in travel, it can be like, uh, these are the honeymoon goers lists. And this is the uh, adventure, uh, adventure travel list. So based on the segmentation, you decide how you segment, which kind of agents are better suited for these kind of leads. So that is the distribution part. Engagement part, I would say, because travel as industry would be, I would say it would be a high value, uh, a high value and a decent volume industry. So you would be more focused in terms of the engagement. You need to have quality engagement. For example, uh, a customer uh, who is already in touch with you and if it's a high quality, high, high value deal, so he probably would want to talk with the same agent. So automation in terms of uh, preferred agent routing, things like that. And then finally, what uh, sales do you make in a, in a month's time, in a quarter's time? Similarly for financial services, I'm just giving you a flavor. And in terms of financial services, it'll be more of like, uh, how much coverage uh, did you do? Uh, let's say there are, there are a lot of B2C companies coming up in terms of uh, 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 small, medium-sized loans for P2P lending or maybe B2C lending. So how much uh, promise to pay are you generating? So that can be that will be a target. So there'll be a flavor in terms of the financial services. But if you come to the basics, it will be always be generating leads, distributing these leads, and then uh, engaging, engaging on these and finally conversions. So uh, I would like to focus this webinar more on the engagement part, uh, but I believe that that is where we can uh, definitely uh, be covering most of the use cases and most of the value driven things out of it. So I see today uh, organizations, at least the smaller or medium sized organizations, still using Excel sheets and importing data with Excel sheets and calling uh, with phone. So basically they are, they're doing a lot of manual activity and they're not doing the core activity where we are following up on leads, where you're calling leads, where you're selling your product or your service. But there's a lot of uh, Excel sheets, manual calling, and then sales guys doing uh, CRM tasks like inputting, you know, like uh, putting in the fields, uh, making notes in some different software. So there's a lot of disintegration hap happening, at least in the smaller, medium-sized businesses that I see in India today. And slowly the market is catching them, and we are coming with solutions. So in terms of automation, it comes very necessary that it becomes extremely necessary that you are actually doing the core task and you're not bothered about your non-core tasks. There is a manual activity, 
like switching through tabs, uh, switching through systems which are disintegrated. So that that is all seeping down in terms of your productivity. So in terms of engagement, I would say uh, calling uh, automation in calling, uh, dialing uh, automation through uh, dialers can really help in terms of the coverage and really helps you in terms of the connects the number of connects you can make uh, each person with each person with each agent and in terms of the uh, I would say the supervisor also it gives a, a broader idea of sense of idea how your team is performing and you can monitor them on a day-to-day -day basis uh then uh, finally uh, i will uh, coming to the conversion part uh, as i mentioned uh, how how your uh, uh, maybe uh, account executives or your sales heads are you are they measuring you or measuring you upon your seat cost or number of connects you're doing so coming to coming forward to this i'll probably uh, touch upon a little on the challenges that each of these uh, segments face so let's have a look at the challenges now. So based on uh, based on my understanding and based on the inputs that we have gotten from a lot of our customers. So being from a call center industry itself, we have seen a lot of customer engagement and a lot of real use cases where customer service uh, people face. And what we have realized is automation or a poor automation, I would say limited automation is the source of a lot of challenges for your teams. Let's come to the generation part, right? As I said, generation would be inbound as well. It will be outbound. So an inbound, uh, inbound uh, sale, uh, an inbound uh, marketing-driven sales team would normally get these warm leads from their marketing team, and they can then follow up or do touch points on it. So what are the challenges here? Sometimes it will be the quality of leads. You're not getting good quality leads, or maybe if you're getting good quality leads, there's not much quantity in the leads. So a successful process is definitely you get repeated quality quantity in in the leads that you're getting in day in day out or maybe in a monthly manner uh, similarly from an outbound perspective uh, do you have a in uh, do you have an in-house research team which is, fed, which is feeding you research leads with the correct buyer personas but one more often that i've seen that uh, there are a lot of challenges in terms of identifying the right buyer personas identifying uh, the correct leads or the quantity of leads from the outbound team. A lot of companies try to outsource research areas or a lot of com companies try to outsource, uh, uh, I would say, contact data. That might not be a good strategy, I would say. Uh, it depends if, if, this call, if the complexity of sale is not that much high. So maybe, uh, maybe then you could outsource it, but if the complexity of sale is high, and you have to engage, you have to work on the adherence of your team, then I would definitely say that you need to do it in-house. So these are some of the challenges that I've seen that people face. Uh, one of the more challenges generation is a lot of inside sales uh, agents or telesales agents are also involved in prospecting themselves. So simultaneously they are prospecting and they're also calling up on the leads. So this again beats out in terms of the productivity. So you're not doing the core task, uh, you're also involved in prospecting. So you're not getting the whole output that you would likely be having if you have a good supply of quality quantity leads. Coming to distribution, so as I mentioned about the Excel sheets, manual uploads, uh, no context. So you don't have any information about the customer. There's no view of the customer, just a contact email, a phone number, a standard pitch, and a same style of selling because riding in 60 calls a day, 70 calls a day, it can get hard. It can get hard for the agent. Uh, it can get hard for the customer as well. I mean, because he's listening to the same pitch from everyone. So providing a little context to the conversation is one of the challenges I've seen. Then again, uh, a bigger challenge, I would say, is the higher amount of lead response time. I'll give you a small example here. For example, I got a, I, as a got, uh, let's say I want to invest in mutual funds, right? I go to a website. So I don't go to one website. I go to five or six websites. And then I fill forms. I fill my queries. So I will definitely will, so the, 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 so the statistics say that you'll definitely be trying, we will be closing in with someone who has responded faster. So if you fill five forms today and there are two of them who got engaged with you early on, then definitely the probability of you closing that deal is higher with you. So I would say in today's scenario, a higher lead response time is very critical. Coming to the engagement part. So again, uh, context, I was, as I said, this single view of customer is a problem. 
uh, if you don't have enough contacts, especially for high quality, uh, I'm sorry, high uh, ticket size, low volume customers, maybe uh, a loaning customer or maybe uh, somebody booking for a honeymoon destination travel, which is a high ticket item. So these kind of things, you would need more information about the customer so that you have a uh, evolved or well aware about the customer and well defined strategy of pitching things. Then uh, in terms of, uh, I would say engagement metrics and in terms of also monitoring metrics, how how is your agent average call time like? Is it high, is it low? Uh, if you have 80 leads, are they able to uh, are they able to cover all those 80 leads and all that? This can be some problem. Then again, this will be a problem more on the signs of where you have lower tickets, high volume deals. Then I've seen the problems of collaborations. Example being you are not you as an agent are not able to provide the right answers. So can you do a real time confer uh, Barge or snow with your supervisor coming in and helping you out in real time This can help you close the deal and a lot of times I've seen that uh, if you don't have the right answers ready If you don't have the right answers ready, this might be a problem in terms of losing the deals, right? And then again the core tasks uh, so you are calling people up uh, but uh, there's no logs uh, so you are taking manual notes and then you capture, capture these manual notes manually, feed it into a CRM. This is all eating down into your productivity. So more automations needed in, in terms of the uh, CRM end and the integrations end. And finally, the conversions, uh, getting more visibility to your supervisors. How is the team doing? Are they meeting their quotas or not? And is the supervisor able to build a defined a uh, predictable stream of revenue through inside sales and not so predicting this can be a real challenge and this can only be solved through defined processes so i would say it's not like even you can hustle down one or two times but if you don't have a defined process which is tech enabled you are definitely going to lose money on the table right so let's have a look at uh, uh, at how you overcome these challenges in terms of a good integration with the call center software yeah, in terms of calls in the software so this is my slide i'll talk about from a sales development process what are the things that can be done uh, so that that enables your inside sales teams to have better conversations to talk with more context uh, to talk with more information so they they are ready so some of the pointers i have mentioned here is First one would be making your marketing count. So not all of us are blessed with uh, marketing leads, right? We all would agree that a lot of a lot of organizations, at least especially the one driven by telesales, you don't have marketing leads. You have cold leads. You have to call them. You have to follow up on them. And there are no touches. You have to work hard for them, right? So if marketing is providing you some leads, uh, which is all all the warm, they have done some engagement on your digital assets like your app websites and apps, you definitely have higher chances of converting them. Yes, sometimes quality can be issue, but think of it like marketing is kind of a gold mine of data. Not now, but maybe let's say three months down the line, you might be able to close that deal. So I would say uh, working closely sync with your marketing is definitely a plus. You have to inculcate that into your process. Uh, I would say I would think you would also uh, appreciate the leads that you're getting through the marketing teams. Secondly, I would say investing in the right buyer personas. Uh, so this will be more uh, relatable to people with uh, high ticket size or more complex processes. So getting the right buyer personas is very crucial so that you're not wasting time with the uh, with the wrong uh, with the wrong customer or the wrong prospect. So having a you know having a defined process or maybe your supervisors or peers can define these buyer personas more accurately so that you can just focus on prospecting. Then finally, third, I would say is providing triggers. So triggers in today's scenario are very important, I would say. Uh, when I say social triggers, it can be Facebook triggers, LinkedIn triggers. I'll give you an example. Let's say you're pitching it. Uh, let's just say you're pitching. Um, I'll take a travel example. You're pitching a honeymoon um, honeymoon package to someone, right? So if you have some information where, you know, the guy is married or maybe, you know, any information in those lines. I'm just giving you a very basic example, but maybe these triggers can be used them to uh, to get a more engaged conversations uh, or maybe uh, somebody's trying to buy a buy a home right so if he's married and um, you know he's earning his credit score is good so maybe you know uh, these these can be building as a conversation points where you can tell them okay maybe this is your brand of future though i would i thought you would be interested in loans so these kind of things will probably 
uh, increase uh, the conversion rates or at least the engagement rates within your inside sales team and finally the sales efficiency how to improve that then non core tasks i've already talked about and uh, controlling sales development tech is very important today i would say that because a lot of companies i've seen they outsource their inside sales teams uh, to other uh, business process organizations so i would say that at least even if the outsource uh, if you have outsourcing your inside sales team it is okay but at least you should control the uh, the sales development technology behind it so that from a me from a measurement uh, point it's not a black box so you know at every point that okay this is what is happening with your leads this is what is happening you know this kind of engagement is happening so at least throughout the pipeline stages you can actually figure out okay what is happening at each stage so because you're paying it so i would say you need to make more sense of the more sense of the process that these guys are doing and uh, getting your own tech and then outsourcing will be i would say will be a better idea than just outsourcing it into a black box then finally preparation is the key so i would say uh, prepping for your leads uh, is very important uh, so if you go with the same strategy of calling 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 and you see that the results are not changing and definitely there is something that you have to change so preparation i think is one thing at least for it es selling or high value selling which is going to definitely impact where you look for uh, triggers on uh, websites uh, google search engines to your prospects and all it'll take 5 or 10 minutes but definitely be worth the effort and finally for the supervisor i would say measuring effectiveness right measuring how effective your sales is now coming to the more of the operations part i would say so how uh, a crm integration and uh, with a contact center will help you number one you're not do going to do manual tasks so you have a cti enabled phone which opens up with your crm right and as soon as a, let's say a Gaurav is a customer and Gaurav calls in and so as soon as Gaurav calls in there'll be a screen pop-up which will show oh this is the phone uh, is ringing the agent picks up there's a pop-up that happens which gives you all the customer information so you have a good single view of customer you have more information you have more talking points and it's just one click away so you are cutting down on manual tasks second thing is uh, you can also see for example for a software like lead squared which is uh, which provides you an activity thread you can also actually see okay uh, what all touch points your contact has made and then you can have more conversation points so basically from the activity logs you can actually see that this customer has made so he joined in in our ecosystem on x date and with the next from the x date till today there have been 20 touch points maybe he downloaded an ebook or maybe he he bought from us uh, this day or maybe let's say if he is uh, into an e-commerce industry then maybe he is a customer who has been uh, who has a higher lifetime value or who has been who has been uh, engaging with us for long he has done these many buys so this kind of information not exactly this information but you get the idea right the lot of touch points you can see so you obviously have more talking points to them now coming to uh, the telesales processes i definitely you say if you have uh, integration like this then your supervisor can use uh, customer manager or i mean uh, data managing apis where you can pull in data from your crms and then you can start uh, auto dialing uh, to different uh, to, to let's say 50 plus or 100 plus contacts in one go and only the calls that are connected will be passed on to you so you you, you don't waste time in reaching out or waiting for voicemails auto auto voicemails are dropped uh you just uh, are connected when the call is actually connecting so you, in the end what is happening is you're saving a lot of uh time in terms of the manual effort you're not dialing manually one by one right uh so in terms of the coverage i think dialer really helps in terms of the telesales process and there are different types of dialing where if it's a high value items there'll be a preview based dialing where you have more information about the customer if it's a small ticket item and there is a lot of uh, contacts you need to reach out to and coverage is an important metric then maybe a predictive based dialing will definitely help you here then again scheduling callbacks uh, let's say you had a conversation didn't go through scheduling callbacks can be done uh, through the crm itself right you will have reminders 10 minutes before okay uh, the call didn't go through the call disposition was busy so or maybe the, uh, the customer said hey got up call me back in let's say four hours so you you can put a task of four hour callback and you'll get a reminder in 10 minutes so what is happening is actually you are creating a follow up process 
and you, at the same time you have reminders in place so that you don't miss out on your leads so that is what a good integration does to you finally i talked about the customer data management apis that is the lead management part where you can even from a segmentation part right uh, let's say if you are doing a telesales process in five geographies right uh, and you have agents based on the skill sets of language so if somebody is selling in andhra pradesh so he'll be he'll be in, in a queue where agents who are skilled in telugu if he's sitting in punjab punjab so maybe uh, there'll be agents who are skilled in punjabi so from a rule based point of view also you can segment your uh, customer list uh, into queues and these queues will have agents which are skilled for example language is one of the skills i mentioned here similarly it can be any other thing that is uh, that is more relevant to your business so from a supervisor supervisor's point of view you have more control more adherence of the process you can segment it better you can actually see which is performing which is not <laughs> then again uh, today you see that uh, with the because i think a lot of telesales people or inside sales people might be facing this problem where they're not able to go through the gatekeeper or there'll be problems with the uh, pra people not picking up because of uh, things like true caller in the market who who give more of a spam right so i think in that point of view uh, you can do pri plus gsm based dialing where you can configure your mobile numbers with the agent so that calls go with their mobile number being shown that and then finally uh, uh, conversions uh, where you have birds eye view we have good reports crm reports uh, of your agents how much activity they did and not uh, real time confer options transferring to accounts uh, supervisors can barge in help out customer uh, agents in real time so from a conversion point of view i think these are the operational things that that a good crm integration with a contact center a powerful contact center can help you achieve it so i won't take much time i think i've already taken 30 35 minutes i would like to pass it on to suhas here who will be covering use cases real use cases with you guys right so over to you suhas hey goro thank you for those insights uh, i'll just quickly hmm. set up my slide thank you all for joining the the webinar so i'm sure you would agree uh, that generation of entrepreneurs and philanthropists would say that execution is everything for any organization or team so that they can aim high move fast and excel in their day to day activities so me suhas chenoy director of customer success at lead square will take you through business cases where we have successfully executed tight integration between ameo and lead squad as a call center and crm lead squad is a sales execution platform and it runs on a automation logic and it is very important to automate every process of yours so what are the three impact areas right for any business it's customer attraction customer acquisition and customer retention all these areas will definitely have a strong case studies wherein call center and crm go hand in hand to execute the processes which will finally convert to a high generating sales or high conversion sales in any organization so without wasting time let me quickly take you through what are the benefits of a integrated crm and call center Point number one is customer 360 degree view. So customer 360 degree view is not overloading a person with large amount of data. It is about showing right data at the right time, right? That's what a call center integration and CRM would help. So imagine your sales funnel, right? When a fresh lead arrives, you would want to know only few details that. demographic details of the lead and what was the source through which lead has come and what his his interest right so based on that you can strike a conversation which is much more meaningful for you power of communication so communicating at the right time is more important than over communicating with your customers which means so when i 
submit an inquiry on the website, how fast I get a call back is very important. In current competitive world, you would agree that a person would not evaluate just one product. He would definitely go to the uh, internet world and fill an inquiry on multiple products. But the first call he receives can create greater impact and help his decision making process, right? So it is always, if you take the statistics, it is always first connect would have higher probability of conversion. Then increasing efficiency in the process. So I will explain in my further slides how to increase the efficiency in a call center process in different scenarios, right? And then enhanced customer experience. So from a customer point of view, the experience what he gets while he talks to the individual from the from the vendor end plus the experience what he gets when he fills in the data right and and the amount of information uh, right information which he gets so that always makes a difference and helps the decision making process in the sales cycle so all of this results in increase in sales so quickly taking on to the uh, scenarios right fresh lead calling so now fresh lead calling imagine a scenario where you have inquiries in bulk so maybe uh, in thousands 20000 30000 in a day right or or in hundreds several hundreds in a day so when you have a lean call center system it is very important to talk to the right customer right how that can happen so basically in lead squad we have something called lead score which can prioritize your calling logic if a person has spent sufficient time on your website and he has shown sufficient interest by reading your emails, reading your SMSs and etc., right? Automatically, he is much more interested and his decision making process would be much faster compared to a person who just came into your website, waited for two seconds and left your website. So in a general scenario, if you don't have an integration with CRM, it is just a list of leads which will upload into a call center system and then call center would dial out. You would not know uh, what customer is much more important and which customer to talk to first. But with the integrated CRM and call center scenario, CRM would feed you with exact score of high probability of conversion so that you can talk to those customers first and get higher conversion second scenario is known or existing lead to call so like Gaurav was explaining earlier there's so many logics through which you can enhance the experience of a customer so if a customer has submitted uh, on your website that his preferred language is Punjabi or Hindi or Tamil right you can actually route it to the exact individual who can talk to customer in those preferred languages plus there are scenarios in call center where we call it as a sticky agent and non-sticky agent, which means your customer would prefer to talk to the same individual as he has talked to him earlier and the person would have much more history, what he has spoken to him. He would have much more details. So customer is much more comfortable to talk to the same person. In that case, we can establish a sticky agent method wherein CRM system and call system, call center system jointly identifies the agent and then make sure that same agent is receiving the call from the particular customer. But it's not the ideal scenario. There are scenarios when the agent is not available and the call has to route to other agent. In that case, CRM would give you much more insight on the lead so that when you talk to the customer, he would not feel that he's talking for the first time and he has to repeat all his queries and requests again. Because CRM would give you a history using which when a call center agent calls, he would know exactly that this is a customer who had come earlier, but however, he took some time to call back because he was checking for some other details in the market, right? So you can directly talk to him or the conversation was dropped in between of negotiation of a price you can pick the conversation directly from the place where it was stopped. So that's the power of combination of CRM and call center system. Coming to third scenario, so lead is converted to the customer, right? And when you deal with customer, there are different scenarios like you want to pitch for a cross sell 
or you want to pitch for an upsell with customer or you want to check health of a customer this is where again integrated system would give you an upper edge imagine if i'm calling a customer and customer is already having like 20 open tickets with your support team is not happy with the product does it make any sense for me to talk to customer and offer him a new product up with the cross sell and upsell definitely not right so from a crm point of view it would give you a 360 degree view based on your sales funnel and based on the stage of your customer so that you can make the right conversations and hit the right number of sales let me quickly take you through a business case of insurance we need to understand the journey of the customer how does he come to buy the product or so if i take an example of insurance he would visit the page and then he want to click on buy right still now we don't know who is the person who is coming to the website because it's an anonymous visitor and then he provides the registration details and then he confirms his car details he goes to the premium page he generates the code and then does the payment and changes to the customer so this is the journey which customer would take i'm sure industry wise the journey of the customer would be different in an education scenario it would be a student coming into the page and then uh, interested in a particular course and then he would start an application form an application form would go through different stages finally resulting in payment and after that he would go through a qualification process right so identifying the journey of the customer is important so that your call center scenario will help or the assisted sales should come on the right time if the customer is freely completing his journey on site he doesn't need the assisted sales but if he is stuck in particular step then definitely you need to contact customer immediately so that you can influence his decision of purchasing the product so let me see the communication trigger scenarios so person who has come to the website he has provided the registration details a registration sms and email has gone and after 10 minutes registration is done still he is not completing he is not moving further then immediately crm would give a signal to the call center right so that call center agents can immediately call up the individual and then talk to them and understand why he is stuck in this particular step and if they can help and finish the registration process right imagine this happening in a real time perspective right call center guys would just love to use the system because it is telling them exactly what to talk and how to deal with the customer right again taking another scenario he he's stuck in the premium page again you can call via sms then understand if i take similar example of another case which is your ending business again the understanding the journey it is similar so there are online applications you can come through various sources and then he would fill an application details right after application if application is not completed he's stuck in between then you would send a signal to the call center so that call center individuals can directly call the customers and understand the problem in filling the application details and assist the customer to fill the application form because only when application is completed rest of the process would start firing in the system cool so moving on so let me take an example again uh, there are various case studies which we can share with you definitely you would have questions after the webinar which you can always write back to us at lead squad and we would happy to help you with our experience with customers and how would various workflows uh, work right taking an example of fresh lead calling so what is fresh lead calling so earlier i was explaining about the leads that are directly coming from a website or somebody comes to your desk and gives the details these are all the leads which are not touched again so in a regular scenario what would happen in a fresh press seat calling is if you don't have a crm then it is just an list of excel that gets uploaded into the call center and then call center guys start calling them without knowing the context i mean they would know a little of context but without knowing the context what's happening with the customer because i can guarantee you there are scenarios when this process happens when you actually call this customer customer might have completed the journey on the website right 
and then you would call customer would say hey you know what i already bought your product thanks for calling so which means you're wasting a uh, precious time of a call center guy wherein he could have called other customers and tried for a conversion rather than talking to already converted customer so imagine the workflow starts like this customer visits your website does the inquiries inquiries are stored and using a api structure right you would pass it to the lead squad system where the intermediate data is passed and then lead squad would update the fields and also distribute the lead amongst the available users now this is key distributing amongst the available users right there are there might be users who are on leave there might be users who are not available for that point of time so distributing to available users in a call center scenario is very key because you need to have people to accept the calls or do a call otherwise it's going to be a waste right and then lead squad would also help you to calculate the priority number the different logics of priority that can be calculated priorities can be calculated based on amount of time and the events he has done on a website priorities can be calculated based on the demographic details the quality of the data which we have got so if you have got sufficient data which is filled by the customer which means he is much more interested also priority can be based on the type of product he is selecting if he is selecting a premium product then obviously his priority is higher and and you can also have skill based routing i remember got out explaining about the skill based routing right so for example a person who is dealing with a with the premium product the skill sets are different to the person who is dealing with a, a product with lower price value and then again you will check whether the list assigned owner is available in the system if is available then system would intelligently route to him and if is not available then again system would see who is the other person who is available and then it would go now pushing to a ameo calling campaign with priority number so in a calling scenario you would definitely create a lot of other campaigns calling campaigns one which is progressive in nature which take case of automated dialing continuously two which is predictive in nature where system would intelligently identify what is the right time to call and and what is the right script to call and etc right and plus lead squad once the calling is done then the disposition would happen and based on the outcome of the disposition there are various automations and various triggers that can happen within the crm and and the call center right so example is a follow up if customer says today i am not available can you call me tomorrow or right now i am busy you can call me after two days right now i'm not interested please call me after three months these are all important key triggers so which we need to follow up which means in the disposition when you put the exact date and time right systems automatically trigger those so as a user i don't have to remember system will make sure that you are following up on the right time plus there are scenarios where you are not able to connect to customers either they are not receiving your calls or they are out of reach right there are several other scenarios which we call as nc which is not connected now taking this one example of nc let me explain you A logic for NC. Right. The moment somebody puts a disposition as not contactable, right? Then you can always have an automation in place where you can wait for three hours and then update the lead field and you say attempt number one. So you can have number of attempts. You can define the process in the organization that you will do maximum of six attempts across the span of six days, or you will do a ten attempts across the span of ten days, or three days, or four days, something like that. then again score would be calculated so this is where the integration of crm and call center makes a high priority right i mean it, it gives you a strength it gives you a power of communication because if he is not contactable before calling customer you would know that if he has done some activities on the website or if he's already purchased your product so that's where system again needs to calculate the score need to check of the availability of the user need to check the current stage of your customer and then push to the calling campaign so it will save time save time of the call center users so again 
it's the process is similar once it is pushed to the ameo call center and then there will be a disposition which will be captured based on dispositions the various automations can be can be driven so i have taken few of the examples there are a lot of other examples the best example uh, is again a dead lead example so so many of my customers ask what do we do with the dead leads or a dormant leads so imagine a workflow again for those you continuously send emails you continuously send sms on a regular intervals to those leads who have not picked up your call uh, even after 10 attempts or 11 attempts there might be reason for it they might not interested but whenever they are interested they would come back to your website or they would give you a call back right it's important for a call center individual or a salesperson to know that when he calls back he's not a new person he was there earlier and not interested so that's how you can nurture your dead leads right the moment he clicks on an email immediately trigger your call center system and ask call center system to call back the customer and believe me the experience of a customer when he sees a website when he clicks something and immediately gets a call right corresponding to his his queries it's 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 much more delightful experience for him he can quickly clarify all his doubts and and it can help in his decision of purchasing process so that's all from my end so finally what happens uh, to summarize when a crm and call center is tightly integrated right so so basically you would have a right view of leads at any stage of the sales funnel you would have right communication and you would have operational efficiency you can define your processes based on the feedback right and then you can have uh, different processes which are auto triggered in the organization which would definitely really i mean uh, result in more conversion and it will be a delightful customer experience for it thank you all uh, for joining the webinar i hope you enjoyed the webinar and we were able to uh, influence your thoughts on the call center and crm processes and how to increase the sales in your organizations so we are open for questions shibani what do you <coughs> thank you so much suhas uh, thank you so much gorav uh, we are open to questions as suhas said so those of you who have questions please do share them now it's already 351 so we just have about 9 more minutes until it's 4 uh, i do have a first question already and it's very specifically directed to gorav and it's from sunil and uh, he says gorav what's inbound lead generation okay uh, okay hi sunil uh, this is gorav so when i say inbound lead generation i mean when you are uh, getting leads uh, you are getting leads through customer approaching you for examples being a customer calling you and uh, uh, searching for your products or services a customer coming to your website filling up a form a customer uh, maybe uh, calling up on your ivr and then looking for options so inbound is when the customers are calling they are showing interest so you have to reactively follow up on those interests so that is the inbound way of lead generation which mostly happens through your numbers that is published on your website through your website forms uh, through emails people writing you emails so this is the inbound way of uh, lead generation all right i hope i was um, able to yeah all right um thank you gorav and sunil if you have any follow up questions do ask i will move on to yunus yunus's question so yunus again i'm sorry if i've mispronounced your name uh, but he says how gsm or si sim based integration can be done if we also need to record each conversation or oh, you also want to record all conversations okay so uh, normally uh, so yunus uh, so normally how we do it uh, is uh, so we have a gsm gateway that is in place and uh, you have to buy a gateway with lot of slim slots into it and these all these you also have to buy a voice logger that we provide it's called a vla system so that vla system uh, is a separate feature i mean it's not the default feature of a call center but if you buy the vla feature it will record all your calls into the voice log archive that's how you record all your calls uh was i able to answer your question 
Uh, Yunus, please do tell, let us know. Uh, was that convincing for you? Or I mean, if you have any follow-up questions, and this goes for everyone, please do share that. Uh, I am moving on to Parth's question. So he says, uh, how can the lead score be assigned for an offline lead? Yes. So, so basically, uh, what are offline leads? So offline leads are those which are directly coming from outside. So see, basically, what's the strategy for an offline lead is one, you get a quick quality score based on the data which is provided. Uh, so, for example, if I'm running a software business and in a B2B scenario, then the leads which are coming from key tech parks around Bangalore right, or Hyderabad, th those would be uh, quality leads for me uh, compared to the leads which are coming from remote areas and extra where, where the, I mean, it might not be relevant. So based on the demographic best lead for that, the quality score can be determined. That's first method to, to define the score for a lead. And the second method is once you have the data, then you push an emailer to all these leads and then see the response. So if somebody opens the email and or if he responds to the email, then immediately you start tracking his on-site activities, right? So once he has responded to your email, which means you are able to track on-site, then definitely his online scores can be calculated. That's how you can target the offline leads. All right. Thank you, Suhas. Um, same goes for you, Parth. Any other follow-up questions, do ask. Uh, now, uh, this is a very direct question again for Gaurav. So, Gaurav Praveen says, why should we go with Ameo? Okay. Uh, so, uh, I think, uh, Praveen, uh, I would need more than that. I would say that you should go with Ameo again, a lot of questions. But if I know your process first and what kind of process we are looking at i would definitely provide the answers but on a broader level i would say uh, in terms of uh, looking at the webinars topic and i hope that's why you have joined you would have a crm software in place right and you would want uh, your agents to be more productive at terms of calling so with ameo we will provide you if let's say you're using lead square i don't know what you're using if you're using lead square you'll have single sign on you have click to call you can uh, your agents can produce callbacks whatever voice calls you make they'll all be logged in the lead squad activity stream so that you can access them anytime uh, and also if you knew the vla kind of setup where say uh, if you are into industry where you need to set up your voice you need to store your voice log for three or six months for some regulation purpose we can help you out with that right and i can definitely say that in terms of the calling tech uh, our dialers uh, will give you the best connects It'll give you the best coverage. We have beaten the best in the industry in terms of the dialer capability. So I'm pretty sure if you are into a telesales process, we can definitely give you more coverage, more connects, and more money on the table. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, now I'm moving on to Vivek's question, which is uh, directed to Suhas. So he says, which healthcare companies have deployed CRM and which all areas have this been successfully done? So we definitely have uh, healthcare companies. So I will send you a list of customers uh, separately on a right. I would definitely message you on the healthcare. Yeah, I will tell you the scenarios of how we have done in healthcare. So healthcare runs mainly on an appointment process. So typically a patient would come in and and then book an appointment. So while booking an appointment, he would select the different hospitals uh, which is near to his region and then select uh, a specialty where he needs to, uh, to get treatment from right and, and then he he books an appointment based on the available slots right so from a call center point of view when an appointment lands or when an inbound call lands so call center individual also should be capable of doing the same thing so call center individual would definitely talking to the customer first understand whether the appointment is for him or his family it can be his wife it can be kid or it can, it can be his parents so identify the right lead select that part and then what kind of specialty what hospital right and then in a view in the same pop-up view he would see which are the available slots for him because the booking would happen parallelly in various places and which are the available spots and suggest him the dates and available slots and book that slot for the person so this is one of the strongest scenarios where we have implemented the crm for healthcare 
plus there are different other cases in healthcare scenarios where there is a after service also after in the sense once the patient has come and finished his service there are so many feedback mechanisms which needs to run there's a follow up mechanism which needs to run right and while a call center receives a call uh, the patient might ask for his blood test results a lab results and something right where he can have the view of all those details so definitely we have a very strong use case and we have at least five customers in the health industry who are very popular and largest one of the largest in india so we will definitely share you the customer names uh, so patient okay all right so as i also had a question here uh, in terms of healthcare i want to know that uh, in terms of uh, you know when you said after sale services there are cases today where hospital today mostly have their own patient management system then they have unique patient id they have so this works in tandem with lead squad or uh, a lead squad itself works like a pms system uh, how does it happen no 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 we, we integrate that. with the his systems we okay. integrate with the hr system so basically it's the first part of appointment once the visit is complete it is recorded in the hr system and hr would give an event that mm -hmm. the visit is complete now it is the again the combination of call center to run a feedback wherein a ivr call can be initiated to the patient which says thank you hey you know what if you like our services then press 1 if you don't like press 2 and if you want to talk and uh, share us better experience you know directly talk to a call center executive then press 3 so that is the typical scenario that happened okay and i was also thinking of more of a use cases where okay. you know like a blood group is a good use case um i'm moving on to okay. the next question because uh, i believe there are quite a few questions coming in and we are running short of time so the next question is for probably both of you uh, the, the question goes again by sunil so he says can details obtained from mobile downloads be used to generate lead and leads plus a mayo platform can they help in this yes i think yes uh, uh so uh, i think when you talk about mobile downloads right so this will obviously have some trigger that can be stored in the crm system that there has been one download and uh, i don't know if somebody has downloaded then what do you want to follow up with do you want to follow up uh, with a future cross sell question or you want to follow up with the engagement so uh, maybe so maybe we are interpreting So, so I'm see the interpretation might be so basically you have an app mm. on an app store and and you want to know how many downloads happen and etc. So that's also a good use case, but I don't know how mm. call center and CRM would integrate to a part. I can give you a use case of a ad tech business where where people leave their apps for a trial. So somebody who has downloaded the app definitely will register and start a trial on their app. Uh, which information can come back and store in crm after which again with the combination of call center we can push the data and call can happen to to take for the for the sales process all right so i can i can give you one use case here what we are witnessing is uh, for example uh, we have we have an omni channel customer service support system so we are also building up a google play store channel so that uh, let's say there are a lot of mobile apps today Uh, which are serving customers so if somebody puts up a bad review or you know is not happy with the app so that information can be uh, pulled out into ameo and then maybe into the crm when from a service use case i'm talking more of a service use case then maybe you can engage with the customer and you already have that info as you mentioned because you have already uh, downloaded uh, the app so you will have all that information in the crm itself so you may be able to link that query with that All right. Um, I'm I'm going to move on to the next question again because uh, due to short a uh, shortage of time, um, I'll just try to run through that quickly. And please don't assume that I'm not taking up your question. I've just taken I'm just taking them as they come. Um, so here's a question from Anita who says, "Is there an option to send SMS that can be tracked based on the response? Because in my in industry, emails don't work much." uh okay so as you go first so yeah, yeah definitely there are ways and 
we have methods to track that also so sms can be sent and it can be threaded on the response so there are techniques and methods where a response can also be tracked and nowadays even whatsapp allows you to integrate if you have something like whatsapp whatsapp for business we can do we can track that part also so the direct answer for the question is yes it is possible to track yes yeah i think so emails can be that so i am thinking All more right. of a okay. um okay. the next question is from jyoti who says can we rearrange the leads real time which are already lined up for calling from crm uh sorry shivani can you please repeat that so uh, yeah so the question is like can we rearrange the leads definitely that's why we will pass the priority score so there are different techniques again to do that uh so one is using a api we'll pass the priority score wherein again the priority of the calling the queue numbers can be changed uh, within the queue right again it would be a slight custom work from the both ends uh, from a call center and crm perspective so the answer is yes it is possible to prioritize that's why we would share a lead score or a priority number so that higher the score you move them higher in the queue and call goes first Yes. Okay. Now moving on to the next question, which is again about lead squared. So Anita says, and by default, does the lead squared calls get recorded? Uh, yes, I think uh, if you look at the lead squared CRM, there's an activity thread which shows up all the activity that the customer has done. So when you call them up, uh, your disposition along with your voice log will be stored in the activity stream. Thank you, thank you, uh, Gaurav. Now I'm moving on to Yunus's question again. So he says, "Can we integrate uh, WA Business with API to interact with leads via that platform? How will we receive the message or reply on dashboard, or do we need to check WhatsApp Business app?" Okay. So Yunus, uh, there are two things as you rightly pointed out, and a lot of people get confused with this. WhatsApp Business API is different, and WhatsApp Business app is different. So, to, first of all, to get the WhatsApp Business API, you need to register through a, a registered partner of WhatsApp, which will help you get the API first. Once you get the API, then either if you have a strong tech team at your organization, you can build your own customer service part and send the notifications. If not, you would probably want to integrate with a customer service or customer support solution. uh maybe swas can give you more on the what lead squad does but in terms of ameo we do provide that from a customer service angle but if you talk about the sales angle whatsapp strictly disallows any promotional or notification message i mean promotional notification message an example uh, you don't want you cannot send messages like uh, these are my new courses these are my new products you know if if the template has a buying intent uh, that is not allowed in the platform and from a legal perspective also there's a penalty on it but from a customer service point and a, and a reactive uh, notification point of view for example i go to book my show i book a ticket i'll get a notification on whatsapp saying hey gaurav uh, your booking this 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 has been done with cinema hall this 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 hope you have fun so this is a reactive uh, non promotional notification so these ones are allowed and then let's say i went there to the cinema hall i didn't i say oh uh, i booked the tickets but the cinema hall guy is telling me that no your seats are not reserved now so i'll probably start chatting again on the whatsapp thread and then that customer service scenario unfolds so these two use cases can be done but you need to get the api first through a registered partner i hope i was able to answer that thank you gorav uh i see two last questions that we can end with um so again yunus <laughs> going back to him so his <laughs> So this question goes can you suggest some good name of such hardware provider or a guy who can help us for integration with CRM and other platform uh right now i can't use this but uh, if you can leave me the email id i'll uh, i maybe you have joined in so i'll probably send you something after the webinar great and i think uh, so sunil also sort of wants to be uh, wants to get connected with uh, you both 
so i will uh, share your contacts with him so he can he has some couple of, he has a couple of questions i believe uh, i'll put you in touch with him and lastly uh, shiv here's your question um, so he says what's the working role of a mayo and lead square okay so uh, so lead square is a crm right is a marketing automation plus a crm and uh, let's say a sales company is using that crm for their sales process so in sales process you also need to call and work on leads so the calling part of it is handled by ameo we do a url based integration so it basically uh, if you look at the uh, lead squared crm screen on the right side there'll be a small frame i frame where the ur uh, the ameo's uh, telephony will open up so what essentially is doing is you it's providing you calling options that work in tandem strongly with the lead squared crm so that as soon as you're calling someone you can simultaneously have a look at the customer information as soon as you get a call from a customer already registered on your crm it automatically opens up that uh, frame of customer uh, customer profile right so basically it giving you context uh, you can do click to call dialings from the crm itself let's say the crm window is opened up lead squared it's a gorov and uh, you can see his phone number it will be a link you just click on that link calling will start right no manual stuff you just go in there uh, push the button get, uh, your calling starts you save time uh, you call in context as suhas mentioned in the webinar you have a 360 degree customer view you know you have made more on engaged conversations and then whatever you your conversations happen they are all logged in the activity stream so let's say uh, if 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 you if you're working with a lead which is in a new stage now or let's say even a prospect stage now and then you pass it on to an active stage or maybe you know uh, a negotiation stage maybe and you have passed on that stage uh, with the workflow to another agent so another agent when he calls up he has the whole context so so basically you're giving a good uh, context to the agent so that the customer experience is not ruined the customer has a consistent experience he, uh, agent knows what stuff he's going to talk about because he already knows the history so that is how the close integration works and it helps you uh, be more productive cut downs on your manual operations and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, different systems like different calling and different integration if you have a broken process uh, then if you're doing it uh, let's say you have a different telephony different crm you would uh, yourself be facing a lot of challenges in terms of putting in crm data you know then uh, opening up a new tab and then searching for information these things so that's how it helps Perfect. Thank you so much, Gaurav. Um, I think so. We have one last question. Before that, a question that I can finally answer. Um, yeah. Will the recording will be shared? Yes, it will be shared. So don't worry about it. Even if you missed some bits in the beginning, we will share the recording. So not to worry. Finally, coming to the last question for the day, and it's from Rahul, and he says, "How can one ascertain whether a lead is clicked or not over a phone call?" How can a lead be assigned whether clicked or not? It's clicked on a phone call. Uh, so yeah, that's how it goes. He says, "How can one ascertain whether a lead is clicked or not over a phone call?" I mean, uh, if you want Rahul to just elaborate on that, uh, then I can ask him to do so. Uh, yeah, Rahul. I mean, this is the last question, right? So yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Rahul. Uh, please do let us know. Uh, just a a line. further as to what exactly you're looking for and then we'll be able to help you better so i do not see anyone typing uh, from my question panel so i'm not sure if he is going to elaborate it, elaborate okay. on that or not right. as now so i think so as per my understanding i just want to say that if you click on it like you do a click to call you click on the phone number so a call window will open up and calling will start right as soon as you dispose that call that activity be logged in the activity screen so you would know that someone clicked on it because if the if the calling i frame opens up you have to dispose the call so that uh, then only you will be able to do the another activity so you have to close that uh, call by putting it a call disposition like a busy not connect connected or whatever your business has configured and then it's be logged in your activity screen so you would know that your your agent has called 
and uh, in terms of if you if you think it's more from a measurement perspective so your supervisor would know how many attempts you have made uh, it can he can check that information in ameo itself yes i think that's what he meant he's uh, he kind of added on to that saying client is pitched or not so that is i think client is pitched or not as the voice logs so your supervisor had yeah. to go through voice logs to find out what kind of conversation they have had right but uh, that is with lead squad but if you're talking strictly from a call center perspective there are quality management modules where uh, they can uh, you know uh, do speech to text and i'm talking more on automation here where these voice logs can be converted into text and then uh, based on machine learning or not machine learning exactly but based on mostly keyword based searches you can identify uh, if the keyword was uh, was there in the conversation or not. for example if i'm asking for a loan or if i'm if i'm an agent who wants to uh, get the uh, you know uh, you, i'm i'm in a process where i want to recover loans so i need to say the amount or i need to use some definite keywords so that can be only done through a quality management guy in terms of the call center scenario but from a linkedin perspective your supervisor your manager has to go through your voice logs i hope i was able to answer that uh, with all right. um all right uh, thank you so much and yunus again yes just to answer your question uh, your question was are there any real estate companies using this crm platform yes there are plenty i can say that again uh, we can get in touch with you i i see that you have shared your uh, contact details you can share that with you as to uh, yeah so as we'll take this definitely yes so we have zillions of use cases where we can demonstrate realistically how the how the platform works so the use cases which i demonstrated was directly uh, from our customer base itself so it's the learnings uh, from what we have implemented and executed for our customers so i can assure you 100% the use cases stands true and definitely you can connect to us we can also provide you more insights on exact type integ how does a type integration with the call center and lead squad and specifically with ameo and lead squad we have a actually inbuilt connector with ameo it is very easy for implementation so once you have lead squad installed it is just a connector which is getting installed and 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 both the teams will work in tandem and you will be live within no time you would be amazed to see that all these Uh, uh, logics all these uh, particular processes which are defined you can actually implement and get executed within a shortest time frame uh, i can assure you within 15 to 20 days we'll be able to go live with all such processes so it is such a uh, easy configurable systems thank you thank you so much suhas uh, we have come to the end of the session thanks so much gora for taking the time to do this for us i hope you enjoyed it as well we got a lot of compliments from the audience today uh, they really enjoyed the session and uh, found it useful more specifically so that's thank always you. great to hear uh, any final thoughts from you gora no i think i'm really grateful for this opportunity and i am i do thank everybody who joined this session and especially suhas for doing this with me uh i hope that uh, i would have at least helped you somewhere or some place in your process and given you some insight that you can actually use in the practical aspects of your profession and that is my aim here and uh, again thank you for thank you shubhani for uh, attending this webinar and shaista for helping me out with the decks and organizing this all for us in ameo and you thank you guys thank you so much and thank you everyone thank you so much uh, again concluding thoughts it says wonderful session thanks so much a lot of compliments so thanks a lot guys for hanging around we are a little over time so thanks so much anyway um i'd like to remind you we have a session tomorrow on automation in healthcare so those of you who are in healthcare and want to learn how you can use automation there please do join us for that and those of you who are our lead squared customers or users we have a product update webinar this friday so all the new features that have come up we'll discuss all that and more on friday i hope to see everyone back i i know i won't but i just do hope uh thanks again for joining the session i hope you all have a great evening bye bye take care thank you bye bye
Nice. Have you left the session? Okay, my thing is hanging. This is a major problem. Good now, I can done. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been able to exit out this thing. I don't want it to affect the recording because my thing is uh, I'm the organizer, no. <laughs> this guy's wonderful session. Thanks, Suhas. Suhash. <laughs> Suhash. <laughs> <laughs> Sunil, Sunil, some guy. I don't know. <laughs> Why is this not ending? <laughs> 